perspective? Do we have, uh, do we wait for others to join? Or we'll okay, just start. Now oh. the, the webinar is, has begun. And we are now on YouTube Live. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde. Bienvenue au Conseil du 17 mai 2021. Welcome, everybody, to our mid-month council meeting. We have just a few updates tonight uh, from the council members and in our agenda. Um, I will begin with some updates. Um, and tomorrow morning, you will see a much longer uh, statement from me on Bill 96 and the Quebec tabling of Bill 96, uh, the Quebec government's tabling of Bill 96 an act respecting French, the official and common language of Quebec. Um, this act proposes changes to the 44-year-old charter of the French language, commonly known as Bill 101. Its scope is broad and it's far reaching and it proposes changes to the Canadian constitution, the Quebec Charter of Human Rights and Freedoms and the Civil Code of Quebec among other statutes. What they are now proposing in this bill is certainly less draconian than what we had anticipated. The bill does propose taking away the bilingual status of any municipality that does not have a population of at least 50% English speakers. I should point out that it is my understanding that the definition of English speaking Quebecer is now very narrow or certainly more narrow than it was before. Cities and boroughs, however, do not that do not meet the 50% threshold and wanna preserve their status can adopt a resolution to that effect. So the good news is that we will remain a bilingual municipality uh, and will continue to provide services in both official languages. Uh, and we will certainly be following this issue. It's incredibly important to West Mounters uh, and to all Quebecers. And uh, tomorrow you will see on our different social media platforms and on our website, a, state, a, a much more thorough statement from me on this issue. The other subject that I wanted to talk about was the protesters that have been gathering uh, have been gathering in Westmount. You would have seen, I think many Westmounters saw them this weekend. And again, the protests that took place uh, downtown yesterday, I, I will always support everybody's right to protest, but we, my expectation, and I think that of, of everybody's is that it's done in a peaceful manner. There have been some questions about uh, whether or not the city had given permits for this protest that began uh, in front of Westmount Square the other day. We do not. That comes from the SPVM, so it is not something that was at all sanctioned by the city of Westmount. And again, uh, we just we I just want to reiterate that I absolutely support people's right to protest, but that it does need to be done in a peaceful manner. So on that note, uh, those are sort of the two main issues that I wanted to talk to you about tonight. But I will hand it over. I know m many of the councillors have uh, updates that they want to share with us tonight. And we'll await the news tomorrow that we hope is good news for our commercial sector, good news for our restaurant industry, um, that uh, there should be some changes to the COVID restrictions that are in place from the province of Quebec. But we will await that news tomorrow and see how that affects us. But uh, we're hoping that it means that our terraces and things like that can open um, in, in support of our restaurant industry. So I will hand it over to Councillor Bostock, who is going to begin with one of her, um, uh, with her updates. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, just wanted to, to bring to everybody's attention today, if you didn't already know, that today is uh, International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. It's uh, observed on May 17th and really aims to uh, coordinate international events that raise awareness of LGBT rights violations and uh, stimulate interest in the LGBT rights work uh, that's being done worldwide. And it really provides an opportunity to take action and engage in dialogue with media, policymakers, uh, public opinion, and the wider social uh, civil society. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention today. Thank you for that. Do you have any other updates? Thank you. That's all I have. Thank Keep you for that. And, Keep your dog uh, on leash. Keep your dog on leash. And I just, yeah, just to reiterate your points on that. And I think we, you know, I certainly pride myself and all of us on being a very inclusive community. So um, thank you for your update on that. Our next update is from Councillor Cutler. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll echo your sentiments uh, about protests as well, and certainly echo Councilor Bostock's comments of um, today being a special day for the LGBT community. Um, I have a few updates as well. Um, first being the 
be in the next week or two um, that construction is season is going to be starting and we're going to be um, we're going to see some of our streets get dug up. This is a good thing. <laughs> this is us investing in our infrastructure. It's an important step. I know it causes inconvenience, but bear with us. I promise you, we have a huge, huge, huge infrastructure uh, investment this year. And one, obviously, that we think is going to hopefully be well received by all of our residents because we're well overdue on some of these roads that are going to be reconstructed. So look forward to seeing that uh, as the summer is among, uh, upon us here. Second thing I want to, to mention, um, obviously winter is behind us now. However, I do bring this up this time of year that if you have feedback about our snow removal process over the last winter, anything that you want shared with us, we always do a postmortem. We always take into account feedback from residents. This is how we improve and continuously get better. So if you do have feedback on that, feel free to send it to me directly and I can share it with our public works team who worked so fantastically well this winter. Um, I'm very proud of all their work. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is that you'll see this evening, I'll be moving an item regarding um, Ford and Avenue. And this is in regards to um, the tragic death of a cyclist there last year. We finally received the coroner's report that made some recommendations. Um, we've obviously already taken some measures to make the, that, that area safer. Um, but we'll be changing the configuration of Ford and Crescent uh, based on the recommendation from the, the coroner. So um, you'll see me moving that later this evening. Thank you, Councillor Cutler. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Shammy, did you have an update? No? I uh, will move now to Councillor Gallery. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I will be very brief. I have a tennis update. Um, the Stainer uh, clay courts are open. They opened last week. There was a small drainage issue that's been fixed. So please get out and enjoy them. And I just want to clarify any confusion there was about mask wearing in doubles tennis. Um, we will no longer be required to wear a mask when you play doubles in our parks. However, we are still in a red zone. And I urge you to stay vigilant, uh, keep your two meters and uh, govern yourselves accordingly. It's uh, really important. So thank you, that's all thank, for today. Thank you, Councillor Gallery. And next we move to Councillor Wallen. Thank you, Mayor Smith. So the much anticipated um, compilation from the survey that was held on Westmount Park from November 15th to January 15th um, is being completed and will be posted this week on the city's website. So there were a hundred participants in that survey um, and we have um, compiled um, the results from each question and those will be posted. Um, further to that, we will start because we felt that a hundred um, was not a large uh, amount uh, we will be doing. And we also, when we read the comments, we found that a lot of people hadn't viewed the video um, or read the details. And so there was a lot of misunderstanding also. So um, we're going to be doing um, some further polling and uh, some further uh, education on um, the background uh, to each recommendation and why. Um, there'll be some uh, big posts, uh, big signage put uh, around different parts of the park explaining it. Um, we'll have uh, some of our employees there on certain days with uh, iPads and the like asking questions and uh, the like. So that's gonna be starting shortly and I hope everybody participates. Following that, um, the work has started on Green Avenue to make our pedestrian strip with the picnic tables and uh, tables and chairs, et cetera. The painting's going on now, so that should be up shortly. We also put uh, Public Works installed uh, 12 benches on uh, Victoria Avenue to help the merchants who were there who can't have harasses yet. So we've put benches on the city property. Um, so that people can distance and uh, enjoy takeout. Um, there's on both the east and the west. So there's approximately 18 benches now on Victoria Avenue to help with that. Um, the placettes are also up. And good news, um, PME Montréal, which is a petit moyen entreprise, Montréal, are, who work with our merchants and um, they handle funding problem uh, pro programs through the city of Montreal. 
So there's a current program of $4 million million dollars that we're part of for uh, Centreville, Outremont, and Westmount, um, and little parts of other sections. Um, and of that $4 million, um, restaurant and bar owners and caterers who have seating are eligible for up to $25,000 in funding to cover 90% of the costs um, of a project they would submit that could be um, for indoor seating, uh, COVID needs, for for outdoor terraces, um, but also for publicity, communication, and marketing. So I will be organizing a Zoom presentation with Guy Bazinet of PME Montréal and inviting all of our restaurant and bar, we don't have bars, but restaurant and uh, traiteurs to attend. Um, and uh, the funding started on May 13th. It goes to December 31st. It's the first come first get the grant. Um, and they, anybody who's awarded a grant has six months um, to finish their project. And so um, I will be contacting the restaurants and I hope that many will participate. We did have four last year who participated in a similar program. That's all, Mayor Smith, thank you. Great, thank you, Councillor Lalam. Councillor Kez? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just a little reminder that the due date for the first installment of taxes is May 27th fast approaching. So that's one week from this coming Thursday. That's it. Thank you. I think that's it for updates. But I just wanted to, um, if you are watching this, you would notice that uh, Councillor Breschke is unable to be with us tonight, but also Councillor Peart is not with us. And we just want to share our, pass on our condolences on behalf of the city um, to Councillor Peart and his family. Councillor Peart lost his father this weekend. So our condolences, um, our condolences sent to him and his brothers and uh, his, his whole family, his mother as well. So now we will move into the uh, La Première Période de Questions. Monsieur Le Greffier. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> so we received um, <clears throat> a few questions today. Our first question is from Sheila Smith. And her question is, we who live along the highway and train noise would like to know what the update is concerning the building of a sound barrier. This highway is very loud. 30 years plus seems a long time to be waiting. There is something terribly wrong here. Thank you for looking into this issue. Wishing you a good day. Thank you for your question. I agree with you. Nothing irritates me more than driving on the Turcot and seeing the sound barrier on the south side of the, of the highway and not on the north side. But we continue to, um, we are still in, in legal proceedings with the MTQ on this issue uh, to try and ensure that we do get a sound barrier along the northern side of that highway. I don't know if the city clerk or the director general wants to add anything to that. Um, but I think that, uh, but, but yes, we are still pursuing this, um, pursuing this in court. So thank you for your question. Next yeah. question. Our next question is from Karine Paré, and her question is, sound barrier on prospect. We have no updates as to what our sound barrier will be. Please update us. Also, what will the splash pad look like in Stainer Park? If you've ever been to one of those new parks in other districts, you'd be embarrassed at what we have here in Westmount. Others have zip lines, charcoal barbecues, structures for older kids, splash pads worthy of a resort down south. Can we at least have a cool splash pad? Thank you for your question. Uh, I guess it's in two sections. The first one being the sound barrier uh, for, and you live, I believe she said she's on Prospect is, the, is her address. So that section, we are currently, um, they're currently working on a feasibility study for that with the, the, the MTQ is, is working on that. And we will send out an update. We have some, some updates that we will share with the residents of the street that have been in, in communication with us. And that will come in the coming days. Does Councillor Kez or anyone else want to comment on this? The, the sound barrier aspect? Yeah, just that it's, you know, there is a plan de travail for the area on prospect and they are working on it. And as soon as we have any further update, we will share. But at this point, they're working on the plan de travail, which they're supposed to present within two months or so two to three months, let's hope. Okay, thank you. And then the splash pad, uh, they are, they began work on the splash pad, I believe today was the first day of the splash pad work. 
Uh, Councillor Lullum might want to give some updates on that, but it is a little park, but it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a great addition. Councillor Lullum. Yes, um, we did look at having a splash pad with different toys as they're called. Unfortunately, it's a small park. And if we installed such a splash pad, we'd have to fence it off in the winter so that they wouldn't be damaged and that would make the park smaller. So we opted instead to have bubblers, um, which um, will be plenty fun. Um, we made the area bigger, we're landscaping it, there's integrated benches, um, and uh, I think the children will enjoy it very much. It's uh, similar to the one in Prince Albert Park, but it's bigger. And so that is why uh, it's a bubbler. And then in the winter, um, the area can still be used. You know, fall and winter and spring. Okay, thank, thank you. Next question. Our next question is from Susan Grundy. And her question is, as a follow-up to the draft Environment Advisory Committee, EAC proposal that Councillor Bresky kindly shared with Ross Brown, Penny Westman and myself for our input, we kindly ask, when will the EL EAC proposal be discussed at Council? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bresky is not here tonight uh, to answer, the, answer any details on that question. So it will be discussed over the coming weeks and we will certainly make sure that Councillor Breschke gets back to you. Next question. Our next question and our last question is from John Fretz. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Councillors. Madam Mayor, recently Dan Lambert, President of the Westmount Walking and Cycling Committee suggested painting cycling chevrons on Sherbrooke Street, particularly on the busy Victoria Village section. You reacted positively. Certainly it is a good idea, there is speeding traffic and people in and out of parked cars. I believe you said you would forward the proposal to the Traffic Advisory Committee. There's nothing in their minutes. Your comments, please. Uh, it is not. Uh, it has not been addressed at the at the TAC. I don't believe yet, and it is something I've. Been, Mr. Lambert and I were playing phone tag last week, but it's an issue I, I did want to speak to him about, and the the administration will follow up on. Does anyone else have any comments on that? No, okay, but I will follow up uh, with Mr. Lambert on this on this point. That's it for questions. Okay, now we move into uh, the agenda, item number four, the adoption of the agen agenda, Councillor Gallery. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that the agenda of the regular council sitting of May 17th, 2021 be adopted with the following items under new business. 18.1, modification of the access to Ford and Crescent at the intersection of Ford and Avenue. And 18.2, modification of a contract intermunicipal agreement with the Ville de Montréal for the rehabilitation work on water mains and the optimization of a secondary, secondary water supply system. Thank you very much. A seconder on this, Councillor Shami, all in favor? Carried. Item number five, numero cinq, approbation du procès verbal, le conseil gallery. I move that the minutes of the regular council sitting held on May 3rd, 2021 be approved. Thank you, a seconder on this. Councillor Bostock, all in favor? Carried. Item number six, there are no, I have no uh, correspondence to table. 6.2, Councillor gallery, the minutes. From, the minutes uh, of the general committee meeting of council held on April 19th, 2021 are tabled and are available on the city's website. Thank you. Item number seven, agreement for the supply of a connection point located on the territory of Westmount, Councillor Shammy. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I move that council approve the terms and the conditions of the agreement between Hydro Westmount and Hydro Quebec distribution for the supply of a connection point for the STM substation located on the territory of Westmount and that the director of Hydro Westmount be authorized to sign this agreement. Thank you. And the seconder on this will be Councillor Cutler. Any further comments on this? Straightforward. No, carried. Item number eight is the partnership agreement with Westmount Recreation Center and the Westmount YMCA Councillor Gallery. Thank you. I move that the partnership agreement between the City of Westmount and the Westmount YMCA be renewed, that the 2021 annual financial contribution for youth center 
for the youth center located at the Westmount Recreation Center be authorized for a total amount of $53,773 and be allocated in accordance with the financial information contained in the decision-making summary number 2021-1266 and the partnership agreement that the city's financial contribution be paid in two equal installments, the first being payable on June 15th, 2021, and the second on July 15th, 2021. Thank you. A seconder on this is Councillor Bostock. Any further comments on this? Uh, yes, this is otherwise known as the Westmount Teen Zone, and it's been an ongoing partnership uh, that we have with the YMCA to help um, keep busy and uh, have a place to go for our Westmount teens, uh, residents and or students in our Westmount schools. So they're doing their best uh, in the pandemic. They've reopened and we encourage um, all teens that are interested in looking at it or checking it out uh, to have a look. Um, okay. the building is available and most of it's online, but uh, there will be a coordinator in place. Great. All in favor? Carried. Uh, item number nine, numéro neuf, encore Madame Gallery, nomination directrice adjointe bibliothèque publique de Westmount et événements communautaires. Je propose que Madame Anne-Marie Lacombe soit nommée au poste de directrice adjointe de la bibliothèque publique de Westmount et événements communautaires, grade 8, et à compter de 25 mai 2021, conformément à la recommandation salariale de la directrice des ressources humaines contenu au sommaire décisionnel numéro 2021-1269 et selon les modalités prévues aux conditions de travail et rémunération des cadres. Que cette nomination soit à titre permanent lorsque Mme Lacombe aura complété une période de probation maximale de 12 mois, conformément à l'article 2 des conditions de travail et rémunération des cadres. Merci beaucoup. Puis un APR sur ça, c'est M. Chamy. Do you have any further comments on this? Is yes. This a great uh, we're addition delighted to our team. To Pardon me? A great addition to the team at the library. Yes, uh, we're delighted to uh, have Madame Lacombe on our Westmount team and to help our director Cardella with the library and community events. Uh, she's a wonderful background and uh, we're all looking forward for her to start next week. Great. Bienvenue, Madame Lacombe. Bienvenue. All in favor? Carried. Item number 10, another nomination. La nomination chef de division planification urbaine et réglementation à management urbain, Madame uh, Le Conseil Lalam. Thank you. Um, I move that Nicolas Gagnon be appointed to the position of division head, urban planning and regulations of the urban planning department, grade six, effective May 24th, 2021, in accordance with the salary recommendations of the director of human resources as stipulated in decision-making file number 2021-1270 and according to the terms provided for the working conditions and remuneration of management personnel. That this appointment be on a permanent basis once Mr. Gagnon has completed a maximum probationary period of 12 months in accordance with section two of the working conditions and the remuneration of management personnel. Thank you very, thank you very much. Councillor Lalam, a seconder on this. Councillor Shami, any further comments? Yes, so we are reorganizing our urban planning department and um, this is the creation of a new position. And Mr. Gagnon uh, has been working with us since, uh, I think it's May, yeah, since uh, uh, June, uh, July, 2018. And um, he is being promoted to this position. Uh, Mr. Gagnon detient un bac en urbanisme de l'Université de Montréal. Il possède presque de 25 ans d'expérience en aménagement de territoire et de urbanisme. Après avoir occupé la, le poste de directeur à l'aménagement dans deux MRC, il a travaillé cinq ans au service de urbanisme de la ville de rivière ou de loup comme directeur adjoint des programmes par intérim. Il a rejoint la ville de Westmount en juillet 2018 à titre de chargé de projet à la planification et de la réglementation. And so he has been just a, a great new asset um, over the last three years. And um, he has shown great, you know, great knowledge and experience and 
Um, I welcome him to this post and I know he will do a, a great job. Um, some little examples of things he's done include the placettes on Sherbrooke and the uh, pedestrian place on Green that he worked on with our communications person, Elizabeth Smart. Um, these innovations, uh, we went to him and said, hey, you know, to the departments that we need to do something during the time of COVID and they came up with these great solutions, organized it all, et cetera. Um, as well, he has helped us to rewrite many of our bylaws and uh, is uh, working uh, very hard on the 2040 program. Thank you very much. And again, congratulations to Mr. Gagnon. All in favor? Carried. Item number 11, appointment, uh, another appointment, la nomination surintendant voirie et parc, service de travaux publics, uh, le conseil Chami. Uh, merci, Madame la mairesse. Je propose que Monsieur Stéphane Lafrance soit nommé au poste de surintendant voirie et parc de service de travaux publics, grade 8, à compter de 31 mai uh, 2021, conformément à la recommandation salariale de la directrice des ressources humaines contenu au sommaire décisionnel numéro 20-21-12-71 et selon les, mo les modalités prévues aux conditions de travail et rémunération des cadres. Que cette nomination soit à titre permanent lorsque M. La France aura complété une période de probation maximale de 12 mois conformément à l'article 2 euh, des conditions de travail et rémunération des cadres. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que j'ai un appui pour cette motion, Madame Bostock? Any further comments? Just a comment. Bien, bienvenue, Monsieur La France. Bienvenue. Tout en faveur. All in favor. Carried. Uh, again, Councillor Shami, moving um, call for tenders by invitation supply and planting of a set of poles on the territory of the city of Westmount. Councillor Shami. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move to authorize an expenditure in the amount of $52,000 even, including tax credits, for the supply and planting of a set of poles on the territory of the city of Westmount, tendered by invitation number INV. 2021-017 and to award to Laurent Laurent 1991 Inc. the contract for this purpose at its bid price for a maximum amount of $59,787, including taxes, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents for the call of tenders by invitation number INV 2021-017. And finally, to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file, number 2021-1256. Thank you. A seconder on this motion will be Councillor Gallery. Any further comments? Straightforward. No. All in favor? Carried. Item number 13, call for public tender sewer inspection and cleaning, uh, PUB 2021-034, Councillor Cutler. Mayor, I move to authorize the expenditure in the amount of $170,442.80, including tax credits for, for sewer inspection and cleaning tender number PUB 2021-031 and to award Tech Van Environment Inc. the contract for this purpose adds bid price for a maximum of $86,657.08, including tax credits, the whole in conformity with the contractual documents that call for tenders PUB 2021-034, and to allocate this expenditure in accordance with the financial information included in the decision-making file number 2021-1263. Thank you, Councillor Cutler. A seconder on this, Councillor Shami. Any further comments? No. No. All in favor? Carried. Item number 14, adoption bylaw 1572 to further amend bylaw 14, 15, 1475 on nuisances and public order. The city clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> J'aimerais signaler que toutes les formalités requises pour la dispense de lecture de ce règlement ont été respectées et que des copies du règlement ont été remises à tous les membres du conseil et mises à la disposition du public. Uh, L'objet de ce règlement est d'interdire l'accès à une propriété de la ville qui a été fermée au public et ce règlement modifie de nouveau le règlement 1475 sur les nuisances et l'ordre public. 
Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que je peux avoir la déclaration de la part de chaque membre du conseil présent à la fin qu'il ou elle a lu le règlement et que la lecture en est dispensée? Madame Bostock. I move that bylaw number 1572 entitled bylaw to further amend bylaw 1475 on nuisances and public uh, nuisances and public order be, be adopted. Thank you. I declare that uh, by, oh, I need a seconder on that, sorry. Councillor Shammy, all in favor? Carried. Councillor Bostock, did you have any further comments on this? Uh, no, it's just, just to help uh, public security uh, keep, keep people out of places where they're not supposed to be and uh, creating some problems. Okay. Thank you. I declare that are all in favor. We've all voted for that. Yes. Uh, I declare the bylaw 1572 entitled bylaw to further amend bylaw 1475 on nuisances and public order having been duly adopted. It is ordered that notices be given as required by law. Item number 15, uh, participation d'un membre du conseil à une conférence, le conseiller Kez, Councillor Kez. Oui, Madame Mère. Je propose qu'une dépense totale de 670 dollars avant taxe soit autorisée en fin de permettre le conseil Mary Gallery de participer à la conférence de la Fédération canadienne des municipalités qui se tiendra virtuellement du 31 mai au 4 juin 2021. Que la ville de Westmount soit autorisée à rembourser à la Conseil Gallery sous présentation de la facture de la preuve de paiement une somme maximum maximale de 770 dollars et 33 sous en lien avec la conférence de la Fédération canadienne des municipalités. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que j'ai un appuyeur pour ça? Count le conseiller uh, Cutler. Any further comments on this? Is the FCM the uh, annual conference? The annual conference that yeah. Mayor Gallery or Councillor Gallery will be attending, and I will be as well. All in favor? Carried. Item number 16 is uh, urban planning approval of site planning and architectural integration programs, which will be moved by Councillor Lullum tonight. I move that according to the recommendations made by the Planning Advisory Committee at its meetings held on May 10th and May 11th, 2021, the conditions for the issuance of the building permit applications appearing on the attached list reviewed under bylaw 1305 on site planning and architectural integration programs be approved. Thank you. Any, uh, and a seconder on this will be Councillor Chami. Uh, any significant uh, projects you wanna highlight on this list? No, it's windows, nope. doors, porches, and decks. Okay, thank you. It's a busy time of year for urban planning. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Carried. Again, Councillor Lullum, item number 17, urban planning rejection um, of a site planning and architectural integration program. Whereas according to bylaw 1305 on site planning and architectural integration programs, the issuance of some building permits are subordinate to the prior recommendation of plans by the planning advisory committee. Whereas according to section 3.2.2 of this bylaw, council must decide on the recommendations of the committee by way of resolution. Whereas in accordance with the provisions of said law, the permit requested for 471 Victoria Avenue does not meet the objectives and criteria. Whereas as described in guideline 6.1.3 of the guidelines entitled building and renovating in Westmount, when retaining walls are required, dry stone or masonry walls are preferred. Whereas the existing retaining wall is made of natural stone, whereas the proposed retaining wall is made of concrete covered with plaster, whereas the proposed retaining wall is not of, not of minimal height, whereas the retaining wall is located near the street. I move that according to the recommendations made by the Planning Advisory Committee at, this, at its meeting held on May 10th, 2021, the site planning and architectural integration program appearing on the attached list be rejected. Thank you. A seconder on this, Councillor Brostock. Do you want to comment further on this, Councillor Lowen? It's I think the whereas very is clear in the whereas is. All in favor? Carried. Uh, now we move to the two items of new business. 18.1, Councillor Cutler, modification of the access to Ford and Crescent at the intersection of Ford and Avenue. Uh, Madam Mayor, if you don't mind, I'll read the whereas is for this one. 
Whereas on June 16th, 2020, a cyclist was struck by a motorist on Ford and Avenue southbound at the intersection of Ford and Crescent. Whereas the result of the accident, the cyclist died on June 24th, 2020. Whereas on April 1st, 2021, the city of Westmount received a coroner's investigation report regarding this incident. Whereas said report recommends that the access to Ford and Crescent be one uh, be one north of Montrose Avenue be changed, the first one north of Montrose Avenue be changed to a one-way street eastbound on Ford and Avenue. Mayor, I move that better that for a better protection of cyclists in accordance with the coroner's recommendation, the access to Ford and Crescent, the first one north of Montrose Avenue be modified to a one-way street eastbound on Ford and Avenue. Thank you very much, Councillor Cutler, a seconder on this. Councillor Bostock. Do you want to comment further on, on this? I, I commented before, the city has already taken some initiative in the area to make it safer. This is sort of the, the um, final recommendation from the coroner uh, regarding this particular accident. And, um, you know, it's, it was tragic and obviously we're, um, we're doing everything we can to make that area safer. And I think this is definitely an important step in that direction. Yes, uh, thank you for your comments on that. It, I agree with a very, very tragic accident, um, but I think it's important as a thorough report and for us to implement the recommendations to ensure that uh, we can make the street safer. So thank you for that. Uh, all in favor? Carried. And item 18.2, modification of a contract intermunicipal agreement with the Ville de Montréal for the rehabilitation work on water mains in the optimization of a secondary water supply. Again, is Councillor Cutler. Mayor, I move that the amount authorized for the rehabilitation work on water mains and the optimization of the secondary water supply system for the city of Westmount be modified and increased to a maximum amount of $278,259.18 as specified in the Entente and that the additional expenditure of $28,743.75, including all applicable taxes, be authorized for the rehabilitation work on water mains and the optimization of a secondary water supply system, and to allocate this expenditure according to the financial information mentioned in the decision-making summaries number 2020-1049 and 2021-1277. Thank you very much. A seconder on this issue will be Councillor Shammy. Uh, further comments on this? This is an additional cost on, on the project on De Maisonneuve, which is right. the lion's share is paid for by Montreal. Okay, all in favor? Carried. That is the end of uh, the items on the agenda. We now move to the second question period. If questions have come in. Uh, so the have, city clerk, uh, would you like to read the questions? I see that we have two questions. Uh, yes, uh, it seems that it might be one longer question. Um, so I will uh, read it. It's, it's all that we've received so far for tonight's second question period. This is from Maxine Cutler and her question is, um, I live on Lansdowne halfway between Cote Saint Antoine and Sherbrooke. It is one of the steepest streets in Westmount. It has a bike lane on the west side. And yesterday I was sitting on my porch when a cyclist went flying about eight feet in the air and landed on his head and side a horrifying sight his helmet did its job but he broke a bone or two he said he hadn't seen the speed bump i reported the incident to public security and public works and in both instances was told the message would be passed on this is the second similar incident that i witnessed on lansdowne last spring a 13 year old boy cycling with his mother and sister went flying and landed right in front of my house the poor child was seriously injured once again due to the speed bump at the time the yellow speed bump lines had not been painted the pandemic being the excuse part two in the next sending okay because it was as i said a longer question um, since then the speed bump section in the bike path has been flattened but on inspection there is a dangerous hard raised edge where the bike path meets the rest of the speed bump on the street which could easily throw a bike off the only indication of the two speed bumps are signs on the east side of the street i trust you agree that something should be done at the very least, a sign should be posted on a pole on the west side as a warning cyclist before approaching the speed bump or the hard edge should be smoothed out. This is uh, still a serious public safety matter 
and one that could pose a liability issue for the city. Maxine Cutler, Lansdowne Avenue. Thank you for the question and the and the very important information. That um, sounds like a terrible accident yesterday, and hopefully the the cyclist is is uh, not too. It sounds like he is injured or she is injured, but uh, we will absolutely look into it. I know that uh, our public works and our and our public security will take this very seriously. So we will thank you for sharing all of the details and. Uh, the director generals will make sure that this is uh, that this issue is addressed and looked at. So, so thank you, thank you very much for sharing that information. No more questions. No other questions have been received. Okay, and uh, Ms. Cutler, we will follow up with uh, with how that situation is being dealt with. I believe that my office has your has your contact information. Is that it for questions? All right, the meeting is adjourned and we will see you at the beginning of June.